Okay, good evening and welcome to the November 9, 2015 Hillsborough Township Board of Education meeting. I'd like to call the meeting to order. In accordance with the state sunshine law of New Jersey, adequate notice of this meeting of the Hillsborough Township Board of Education was provided on November 5th, 2015 to the Hillsborough Beacon and Courier News. May I have a roll call please, Mr. Bodine? Absolutely. Ms. Bogoshevsky. Ms. Santafanti. Here. Mr. Cohen. Here. Mr. Dutta. Here. Mr. Gillette. Mrs. Haas. Here. Mrs. Haley. Dr. Soissant. Here. Mr. Kinst. Here. We have, we, have, we have a quorum. Let us rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you, members of the audience. It was great to hear that. Okay. We have uh, correspondence that's listed in the agenda, and I'd like to hand it over to Dr. Schiff for the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Kins. Good evening. It's great to see so many people out um, tonight. We have a very special evening in store for everyone. We actually are looking at two different um, presentations this evening. Uh, in our continuing effort to spotlight the great things that are going on throughout the district, we have this evening some of our students from Woods Road Elementary School who are going to share with us their e-notebooks, it sounds like, from their, um, from their readers' workshop. So with that, it's my pleasure to introduce the principal of Woods Road Elementary School, Ms. Jody Howe. Ms. Howe. Thank you, we're excited to be here. I'm, this time I'm going to introduce Ms. Finnegan and her third grade students and ask them to come on up first. And we're excited to be here. Uh, Ms. Finnegan is going to um, introduce everyone and talk about her writer's workshop e-notebook. And she's going to introduce the students, and each of them has a part in which um, they are going to present. And she's going to talk a little bit about um, how she integrates this into her daily routines um, in, into her classroom. This is just one of the many ways that she integrates technology into the content areas on a daily basis. So take it away, Ms. Finnegan. Thank you, Ms. Howe. Thank you for having us. We are so very, very excited to display to you our Reader's Workshop e-notebook. Um, uh, we have Amanda Kurz. Say hi, Amanda. Matt Marchetti. We have Eva Castano, Rishika Kari, and Amelia Nicholas, my five third graders. I'm Samantha Finnegan, third grade teacher, and these are my students that are gonna help me present this. So we'll tell you a little bit of background information before the stars of the show really take it away. Our reader's e-notebook has been adapted from a scholastic physical binder notebook and includes many elements that will be explained to you by my students. And it also has a combination of the scholastic notebook as well as the American Reading Company ERLA assessment where we take those power goals where we set reading goals for each of the student individually differentiated and they all do such a wonderful job and my friend Eve is gonna help us out with that. Um, we use this by uh, organizing a folder in Google Drive, and they use Google Docs, and I can share all of the documents with them, so I can create a table, or create an Excel spreadsheet, or a Google uh, Sheet, as we call it, and I can share it through this program called Hapara. So as you can see up there, it's a name of my students, and underneath are documents, photos, slides, so whatever we need to share with them, I share with them virtually, and they get it within two minutes, and if I want to push something to them, they have it right away. And then they know how to physically organize it in their e-notebook, which is a folder. Um, we use this technology and um, all of the Google slides and documents by using our Nexus 7 tablets. As you can see here, one of my students is reading a book and simultaneously using the Nexus 7 tablet to access one of the documents. I believe she is working on her power goal right there. So she's re uh, reading a Ramona book and she's working on her power goal. And then on her desk next to her is a way to stay accountable. She knows she needs to read um, every day. She needs to mark her power goal. She needs to m write a reading response letter and have new vocabulary words because in third grade we're big on vocab. We are now not just learning to read, we're reading to learn. 
And we also use our Chromebooks, which is another great way to get them acclimated with typing, using those homeroom keys, and they do a fabulous job with that, and they, they are really very fluent with the technology. And as you can see, one student is reading, and he also has his growing vocabulary document up, so tracking those vocab words. And tonight, Amanda is going to be talking to you about her reading log. Uh, Matt is going to be telling you about our genre graph. Eva will be telling you about our Power Goal Tracker. And Rishi will be talking about our weekly reading response letter. And lastly, but not least, Amelia will be telling us about our growing vocabulary document. So here is my first student, Amanda. Why don't you tell us about your reading log? This is my reading log. I record each book I read. I write down the title, author, the early reading level, genre, and how long it took me to read the book. Then I can tell if the book was easy, just right, or challenging. As you can see, I am a white reader, and I like the Dan Gutman books. Thank you. Yes, she is a white reader, and Dan Gutman is a very popular, popular author in our room, and she loves reading those My Weird School. Now, after we are done tracking our reading log each month, Matt is going to tell us what we do when we really look at the genres we've read. Go ahead, Matt. Hi, this is my genre graph. Here I use Google Table to track the type of genres I have read each month. This month I have read a lot of fantasy and realistic fiction, so next month I'm going to try and read some historical fiction and other genres. Right, so Matt loves the color green, so he chose green to fill in those separate boxes to represent eight fantasy books. And he said, you know what, I'm going to read historical fiction next because I noticed I have nothing filled in for that. So he's going to challenge himself. Maybe that'll be his next power goal. Speaking of power goals, does one of my students want to tell me what a power goal is? What is a power goal, Amelia? A power goal is something we try to reach in reading, Good. like inferring new words. Exactly right. She gave you some, one of my favorites, making an inference, right? So Eva is going to talk to us about her power goal. This is what the power goal tracker looks like inside of our e-notebook. Go ahead, Eva. Greetings. This is my power goal tracker. My reading power goal is to decode tricky words. Each day I track how I will reach my power goal, and so does Miss Finnegan. During this week, I used the dictionary, broke up words, and used, worked on soft seas words with Miss Finnegan. What did you do on Tuesday, Eva? What was that word that you chunked up? I chunked up independent. Yep, she broke down independent, and she worked on decoding a new word. She reached her power goal that week. Okay, Rishi is going to talk to us about our reading response letter. Very important, a way to do it every single week to keep us accountable, that you're not just reading and skimming. Your reading is thinking, right? Okay, let's see what strategies you use. Hi, this is my weekly reading response letter that I write to Ms. Finnegan each week. I write my letter in proper format with a greeting and a signature. I explain to Ms. Finnegan what I have read and what reading strategy I am using. Here I made a prediction. Dear Ms. Finnegan, I'm reading a book called Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, written by J.K. Rowling. So far, Harry's being a troublemaker, and so is Ron. Both of them get detention for breaking Professor Monocnell's magic car. During my reading, I predicted that Harry would not like staying with the Dursleys. Sincerely, Rishi. Excellent job, Rishi. And that's how I make sure that I know he can read such a challenging book at a purple level because he's being accountable. He's writing down his reading strategies. And Amelia is going to show us one of our really important aspects of a white reader in third grade is that growing vocabulary. Go ahead, tell us about it. This is my growing vocabulary document. Here I keep track of all the new words I find while I read. I write the sentence where I find the word, my, my inference to what it means, and then I look up the definition on dictionary.com or in my dictionary from the, rotary, from the Rotary Club. For example, I read the word haughty. The sentence was, she put the hat and sunglasses on and stood in a haughty pose. My inference to what it meant was rude, and the real definition was having or showing a proud and superior attitude. 
Excellent job, Amelia. Thank you. So those are those five documents that are inside that folder, which we like to call our e-notebook and their literacy file on their Google Drive. And this is just one of the many ways that we naturally integrate technology authentically every day, not just apps, not just programs. This is a document where we have transformed something that's usually a physical paper document into an e-notebook that works fabulously. And as you can see, their work translates to, it's, it says it all. And here's just a couple of pictures of everybody enjoying their time in our reading block because all of my students do the same exact thing and they all deserve a little recognition for all their hard work. Thank you for having us. We loved presenting. They are very excited. Thank you, Ms. Finnegan and boys and girls. You did a fabulous job, and we know that everyone enjoyed your presentation. I certainly did, and well, job, well done for a job. Well done. Okay? Thank you. What a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much, Ms. Finnegan and Ms. Howe, and especially to all of those wonderful students. They did a great job, and that vocabulary wasn't easy at all. That was pretty challenging. Absolutely. Real quick, two, two things. One thing uh, that, that Ms. Finnegan said that struck me was the, the transition from learning to read to reading to learn. Uh, and then the other part, just from the presentation and the images, was it, it was a nice blend, a nice mixture of traditional and the technology. It wasn't lopsided one or the other. So well done. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you again so much. Our second presentation is that our high school choir is here tonight. They're, they're going to um, perform for us. Uh, we're very proud that they have been invited to sing and perform at Carnegie Hall on December 4th. Here um, to introduce uh, the director as well as our students is the principal of Hillsborough High School, Ms. Karen Binger. Please join with me in welcoming our choir. Good evening, everyone. In May, choral director Ms. Juliana Lobiondo took the HHS auditioned vocal ensembles to the New Jersey American Choral Director Association's High School Choral Festival at Rutgers University. A few days later, Ms. Lobiondo was contacted by a representative connected with actress Kate Winslet's nonprofit organization, the Golden Hat Foundation, and Carnegie Hall, inviting 50 of our student vocalists to participate in Tim Janice's An American Christmas Carol at Carnegie Hall on December 4th, 2015. Our vocalists will be sharing the stage with Sarah McLaughlin, Zachary Levi, and Johan Griffith to support Winslet's organization, which raises awareness about autism, and the Sarah McLaughlin School of Music, which provides free music instruction to underserved youth. This is bound to be a night to remember for our HHS singers. In addition of the students before you this evening, four girls have earned all state recognition this year. Two of them just performed at the NJEA Teachers Convention this past weekend, and two more will perform at the New Jersey Music Educators Association Conference in February. These accomplishments are additionally rewarding since Ms. Lobiondo is a Hillsborough alumna herself, and she has brought her expertise and love of her craft right back home to share with our students. Joining us this evening are members of the HHS Choir who, under the direction of Ms. Juliana Lobiondo, will be performing Amazing Grace for You, arranged by Stephen Hatfield, just one of the pieces they will be singing at their winter concert on December 17th. Mark your calendars, because trust me, after hearing them sing, I am sure you will want to join us that evening.
Thank you. So very impressive, really. Um, the fact that we've been recognized and invited to Carnegie Hall is only icing on a very, very delicious cake. Absolutely wonderful job. Let's give them another big round of applause. I ask at this time the board for a brief recess so the board members can actually congratulate our um, student performers tonight and meet our third graders who also did such a, a wonderful job earlier this evening. We'll take a five minute recess, thank you. Okay, we're back from recess, thank you. Continuing on with the superintendent's report, Dr. Schiff. Thank you again, Mr. President. I have um, some additional announcements to make for the board as well as for the public. On Saturday, October 31st at Rutgers University, the Hillsborough Raider Marching Band competed in the Group 5 competition of the U.S. Band's New Jersey State Competition. The band performed their 2015 show entitled Mad World. The Marching Raiders earned a score of 95.638 and won the first place trophy. They also brought home caption awards for best music, best color guard, and best overall effect. Congratulations to the Raider Marching Band. I know all were involved worked really hard to get first place. I would also like to congratulate Coach Matthew Gatowski and the Hillsboro Middle School Girls Varsity Soccer Team. The team recently captured the 2015 Central Jersey League Championship. Congratulations to the team and the coach for all of their hard work. It also gives me great pleasure to report that the NJEA Review recently published an article that was co-authored by Hillsborough Township School staff members Beth Moran, Anna Mailer, and Angela Cleveland. This article fo focused on Digital Dialogues parent program that the group organized last October. The article highlights the teamwork that made this parent event possible and the utilization of technology to coordinate and collaborate with the many individuals involved in organizing digital dialogues and the use of data to determine program effectiveness. Thank you, Beth, Anna, and Angela for helping inform your colleagues across the entire state of New Jersey of this amazing teamwork that is occurring in Hillsborough. This evening, I'm also pleased to announce that Mrs. Saman Khan has been chosen as Hillsborough 2015 Educational Support Professional of the Year. This award honors the essential role education prof uh, support professionals play in the Hillsborough school community. As an instructional assistant at Hillsborough Middle School, Mrs. Khan has played a vital role within the classroom and is a highly respected member of her middle school community. Her dedication to her students she works with extends beyond the classroom as well. Mrs. Khan is well known for attending and supporting her students in events like the Special Olympics, plays, and concerts. Thank you to, Ms. to Mrs. Khan and all of our district's amazing educational support professionals for the work that you do in our district every day. Hillsborough Public Schools is one of about 100 districts across the globe that have been chosen by Google to serve as a test district to pilot Google Expeditions. Teachers and students in selected classrooms at Hillsborough High School, Hillsborough Middle School, Auten Road, and Triangle School will test drive this new technology on November 18th and 19th. Each participating student will be supplied with their own device for the demonstration. This device will allow the students to take a virtual 3D, 360 degree teacher-led field trip to a destination that they are learning about in their classroom. The destinations could be places such as the Great Wall of China, the Galapagos Islands, or even the surface of Mars. We are thrilled to have been chosen to try this new technology, and I know that our staff and students are in for an exciting experience. So we look forward to that. Google coming back to Hillsborough. And that's all I have tonight. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Schiff. Continuing on with the agenda, we have approval of minutes. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the October 26, 2015 regular meeting minutes. So moved. Do I have a second? Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? We have uh, Dr. Son abstaining. Okay, motion passes. Okay, that's it for the minutes. Uh, now I'd like to open the public. Um, 
It's already budget season. So this is the first of many public inputs that we have for the 2016-2017 budget. Uh, so let's, uh, we want to set aside time uh, and public input specifically for that. Um, after that, then we'll have, uh, then we'll open up the, um, the dais for public input on other items. So first, uh, public input on the 2016-2017 budget. Okay, seeing none. I'd like to open it up to comments from the public with regard to either new business or items on the action agenda. There we go. Good evening. Uh, Henry Goodhue, Hillsborough Education Association, 16 Laurel Drive as well. Good evening, members of the board. As you heard moments before from Dr. Schiff, Simon Khan has been recognized as Hillsborough's 2015 ESP of the Year. We'd just like to share with you that for the past 28 years, a day in November has been dedicated to recognizing the importance of all ESP members and celebrating the essential role they play in our students' educational success. Across the nation, ESPs like secretaries, instructional assistants, custodians, maintenance, buildings and grounds, bus drivers, and many more comprise over 40% of the K-12 education workforce. The Hillsborough Education Association in Hillsborough is proud to have over 250 of these dedicated professionals working within our schools. We hope that you will join us on November 18th in celebrating the contributions of these professionals and find a few moments to thank one of our many ESPs for providing invaluable services that enable our students to learn in positive, nurturing, supporting environments. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Good. Yeah. We will also be recognizing Mrs. Khan uh, during the, one of the January board meetings where we'll be inviting all of the teachers of the year as well as um, um, as well as her to recognize their accomplishments throughout the district. So the board will have an opportunity, um, hopefully, to meet her as well as all of the other outstanding teachers who will be recognized during that evening. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no other public comment, we'll uh, move on to the action agenda. Dr. Schiff. Do we have committee reports? Oh, I'm sorry. We do have committee reports. Well, let's get that. So there was uh, two committees uh, that met since the previous uh, board meeting. First one was governance. Uh, which met on Monday, November 2nd, 2015. Uh, and in that, uh, the, there were, um, reviewed the inputs that were provided at the, um, at the different uh, public input sessions for the input planning, uh, for the strategic planning sessions. Uh, we talked about the views uh, that were expressed um, and then the, the committee members' views on our successes, district needs, and also blind spots. Um, we categorized um, the input that was provided on the um, where we want to be from five years from now uh, into different outcomes, uh, and it's it's a, it was a way to categorize um, a little bit differently than than the traditional facilities, human resources, uh, that type of thing, which we think will actually um, be more impactful uh, for the November 18th meeting in which we have public input uh, on uh, action how to get to those, um, to those goals that were, um, that were brought out um, at the previous meeting. Uh, and so that sh I think that'll be a lot for a more rich, more rich uh, and robust uh, session on November 18th. Uh, we also um, had an update with regard to some uh, school uh, election ethics, school ethics commission uh, advisories uh, recently that came out regarding um, board members and conflicts vis-a-vis -vis relatives on uh, negotiations, and my understanding is that a few more uh, just came out recently. Uh, so we got a little, some additional clarity on, on that. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we had a discussion about PARC. Um, the results will be coming out soon, and, and so we just wanted to make sure that that was on our radar, both in terms of getting the results and then once we get the results, um, how do we communicate that, and then uh, more importantly, how, do we, how does the district incorporate that in terms of uh, improvements um, within the district. So that was the governance committee, uh, and then the negotiations committee met on November 5th. So that summarizes it for the committee reports, and now the action agenda. Dr. Schiff. I ask for the board's consideration of the following motions under the area of education to approve travel and related expenses, the HIB investigation list, overnight field trips, um, approve teacher for acceleration testing, family math sessions, um, staff member being paid through IDEA funds, uh, submission of the Innovate New Jersey Community Application to approve out-of-district um, 
placement transfer, field trip, and one field trip destination. Okay, I'd like to uh, entertain a motion to approve items A1 through A9 of the action agenda. I have a second? Okay. Any discussion? Just a real quick question on um, the uh, submission for the Innovate New Jersey application. See that that's, uh, that's due next week or later this week, actually, uh, on Friday. Um, just real quick, has the primary liaison been identified? And, and I just wanted to confirm that, it's, that the, any additional work is, can be absorbed uh, and it doesn't distract from, from what we need to get done. Okay. A lot of it is what we're, what we're currently doing. We, we do a lot of paying it forward with, um, in particular, the work that we're doing with, with technology. It's a natural, natural growth from, from what we're currently doing. Excellent. Great. Thank you. That's all, that's all I had for that. Any other discussion for these items? Okay, roll call, please. Mr. Wildey. Ms. Santafanti. Yes. Mr. Cohen. Yes. Mr. Dutta. Yes. Mrs. Haas. Yes. Dr. Schlesson. Yes. Mr. Kins. Yes. Motion passes. Motion passes. Continue on with the action agenda. Dr. Schiff. I ask for the board's consideration of the following motions that I'm recommending under the area of human resources to prove the resolution uh, and resignations, leaves of absences, revised long-term substitutes, approve additional leaves of absences, transfer and change in assignments, contract changes, and approve the appointments of a long-term long sub, substitutes, mentors, and extra period coverage. Okay, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve items B1 through B10 of the action agenda. <coughs> no second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, roll calls please, Mr. Bolden. Ms. Setfati. Yes. Mr. Cohen. Yes. Mr. Dutta. Yes. Mrs. Haas. Dr. Swasson? Yes. Mr. Kintz. Yes. Motion passes. Motion passes. Continue on. Dr. Schiff. Thank you. I ask for the board's consideration of the following motions under the area of operations to approve the monthly financial reports, the M1 comprehensive maintenance plan, to accept the donation of 531 dictionaries for third graders from the Hillsborough Rotary Club, as well as a fish tank from Betsy Hollenbach. Okay, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve items C1 through C4 of the action agenda. Okay. Oh, typo. Okay. C1 through C3. Thank you for... Uh... <laughs> Invisible okay. ink, I guess. <laughs> items C1 through C3 of the action agenda. We have, a, we have a, a motion. We need a second. Thank you. Any discussion? Uh, Thank you for the dictionaries. I know that they referred to them in, <laughs> in the earlier sessions. So that's, that's right. Great. The rotary dictionaries. <laughs> okay. They do this every year. We really do appreciate their, their work with it. Great. Okay. Seeing no other discussion. Roll call, please, Mr. Bolden. Ms. Setfanti. Yes. Mr. Cohen. Yes. Mr. Dada. Yes. Mrs. Haas. Yes. Dr. Schwesson. Yes. Mr. Kintz. Yes. Motion passes. Motion passes. And then uh, continuing on with the agenda, I'd like to open it back up to the board or to the public with regard to uh, any items. Okay. Now the board, uh, there are two things. Um, one is last Tuesday we had, um, there was the November elections, which included um, elections for uh, three members for the Board of Education. We are still awaiting the certified results. Um, so once we get that, then we'll announce um, there. I think there's been a couple articles, but the, the county has not officially certified the results yet. And so when those results are certified, then we'll uh, announce it within here and communicate it appropriately. Yep. Um, and then another item that, um, that I'd like to propose for new business um, is that at the NJSBA conference, um, there were a number of uh, there was a session that was uh, with regard to um, the, the Affordable Care Act and changes and implications for districts and what that can mean from a cost perspective. So I'd like to have um, Brown and Brown, who is our uh, health benefits broker, uh, to come in to present. And actually, they were they presented uh, on that session um, just an overview of what the laws are, what the implications are for districts, um, so that we can get in, uh, a good education and understanding of of what's, what's laying out before us. I'll put that on the agenda for our next board meeting. Please do. Okay. okay. We'll do. Any other I, I do have one quick sure. thing, and um, this was reported out from education uh, the, the last time we met, but I just wanted to emphasize it. I've been working with um, 
with Borough Safe for a while now. Borough Safe is a group of um, community leaders, educators, clergy, um, other people throughout our community that are committed to raising awareness and um, supporting all efforts that reduce suicides in our community. We are going to have a kickoff breakfast on establishing a, an annual theme, and this year's theme is going to be a year of gratitude. And um, there, this breakfast is scheduled for, um, for the 20th of this month. We've invited people throughout the community to participate and to engage in a dialogue about how we can um, continue to prevent suicides and to connect those in, in need who are depressed or people who know people who are depressed and suffering, that there are places to get help and assistance. Um, this is a continuing dialogue that hopefully we can uh, continue to have in our community. The other uh, event is that we are going to try to speak with one voice on this matter. The theme of uh, gratitude hopefully will kind of take hold throughout our community. I know that through um, churches and synagogues and mosques, there's going to be some focus on gratitude. And uh, from this dais, I'll be talking about it at our next um, meeting. We're trying to coordinate this effort during the week of Thanksgiving which seems like a very appropriate time to talk about um, gratitude, and uh, also at the township committee. So people throughout the community are um, continuing to focus in this particular area. And uh, for those people who are interested, we, we please welcome you to join. Don't hesitate to contact me or the people at Borough Safe um, to get additional information. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chef. Any other items from the board members? OK. Then in that case, um, we have the information that is provided, and I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do I have a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? We're adjourned. Thank